Good morning. I'm here to talk a little bit about now the idea of people allowing a change, a loss, or a significant life event to put them in a mentality or a thought process of contemplating suicide. And the reason why I'm, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about it, not in great detail, but a little bit about suicide is because it's very common now. Even though it's a taboo, it's still very common. And when we look at suicide, we look at a number of different areas, but generally speaking, there are those when they do contemplate suicide, you know, medically speaking, there are those that have a mental health challenge most of the time that blocks them from even being able to um, think logically around the whole concept of suicide and why they are either up on the bridge and they can't get down or why they feel suicide is an, is an only option. And then there are those who go through, uh, let's say, a significant life event, a change, such as um, a diagnosis of Alzheimer's or a cancer uh, or a job loss. Um, you know, let's say, for example, someone who uh, works for a corporation that generates over two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year, and they've been doing that for twenty years, and all of a sudden the company goes under, and they have to resort to making twenty-five thousand dollars a year. Depending on the mindset of those individuals, if they feel that the lifestyle that they were living defined them, along with the title and the expectation of what the job was in the in the uh, society standards. Uh, if they no longer have that resource and that capability to live that way, uh, they will seriously contemplate suicide. Uh, we have those that may fail exams and contemplate suicide. We have those that might uh, go through uh, uh, a friendship and contemplate suicide. But the truth of the matter is, is that if you can contemplate suicide away from a person who's dealing with a mental health challenge, if you can contemplate suicide, that means you thought your way into it, which means you can think your way out of it. But you need someone to help you with that, obviously. But there comes a time where you as an individual have to take accountability and responsibility for yourself because the impact that a person has when they commit suicide after they are gone is a ripple effect that they will never know and understand nor see. And suicide to a certain extent can be used in the medical world if someone who is dealing with uh, an uncomfortable medical illness in a hospital where they feel that they want to relieve the pain, I can see that there are some reasons where legitimately those things come into play. I'm not going to even discuss that. Uh, and, and as I said, I'm not going to talk so much about people who have a mental health challenge that when they're contemplating suicide, how they don't, if they can't be logical about it. Because the truth is, it's hard to be logical in a time when you have a mental block. But those who don't have a mental block, but are only choosing it as a, as a means to an end, that means you're telling me you're mentally weak and being able to not to realize that you are more valuable than you think. You have more assets. You, have more, you are more of a person who, is, who has a reason to be here. But if you've allowed a title, a job title, um, prestige, salary, um, a way of life, a lifestyle to become you and define you and then hence you lose it and you want to end your life, that's telling me that people are really not in the mindset of understanding who they are as people. And now is the opportunity for us to realize that if you're out there thinking about suicide or contemplating suicide, what's your reasons for living? Why do you want to die, first of all? What's your reasons for dying? Let's talk about that. What is it? What seems to be the main issue? And let's focus on solutions to help you understand that. Because we have to talk about the dark side first. And when we talk about the dark side, we then want to find one reason to live to keep us going. Because everybody has one reason to live. It's an ultimately a choice. And that choice comes down to the individual. Don't get me wrong. I've, I've fell on hard times, rocky times. Not to say that suicide was an option for me. But it's a matter of programming myself to rebound from it. But I do understand that not everybody has my mentality. But we all have a reason to find to live. That is 100% accurate. We can all find one reason to live. It can be for a pet. It could be for an instrument. It could be for a family member. It could be for a friend. It could be for a job it could be for anything but you need to find that one reason to live because i'm telling you people who want to commit suicide are only crying for help wanting to find that reason to live even if it's a person dealing with a mental health challenge they're still needing the support and the help to find that reason to live which means that suicide is a choice we are ultimately making a choice to take our life and if we can find a way how to look at it from the lens of focusing to rebuild our life we can look at that one reason to live to keep us going.